Hey guys, and Gretchen and I are going to be doing something a little bit different today. It's kind of a mix of a haul and a TBR. We both decided that we were going to be taking part in the hashtag read your own damn books challenge, which means that we really need to get on top of reading our own damn books. I've read three so far this year, but then again I've read 14 books so far this year, and that's a problem. So let's uh, see if we can fix that and talk to you about some of the books that we already own that we are very excited about. So I don't think that I've made any headway into this challenge basically this semester yet, year, semester. I'm a college. Life is hard. Um, but I have a great list of books uh, for you that I'm very excited about, so we'll get started with that. And my first pick is Soundless by Rochelle Mead. Uh, this is from the author of the Vampire Academy and Bloodline series, and it is an Asian mythology inspired setting in a village where everyone can no longer uh, speak or hear, so they all communicate with um, sign language. And they're the main girl, um, all of a sudden she starts to be able to like hear and speak, and so it's all about the mythology surrounding that. Um, it's a standalone novel. And I maybe like 85% I'm going to make bibliomancy do this during our summer season. I might not be able to wait until then to read it. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see how I manage that. Because I actually read like the sneak peek of this and that's why I bought it. Because I was like, there's no way I can read it for show me that's not about vampires. And I was like, yes, I can. My first choice is a little bit different for me, and it's Your Invitation to a Modest Breakfast by Hannah Gamble. Now, the reason this is weird is that this is a collection of poetry. I don't often read poetry unless I'm forced to at school, so uh, this is a weird thing that I bought for myself, and it's maybe the reason that it's taken me so long to read this. Hannah Gamble actually came to our school last year um, for the... New Voices Literary Festival, and she was a hit with her reading. I bought her book, and I actually got it signed by her, and she gave me more poetry to read once I finished with hers, but I haven't finished it yet, so I can't move on, and I feel bad. It's sassy and feminist and sweary, and it's just good. Speaking of authors that come to our school, uh, that festival that Michaela is talking about is the New Voices Festival, and it's something that I've been the intern for for the last three years. Um, and so I am privy to all of the authors coming before everyone else knows it. And this year there is a new YA author who's coming to that festival, and her name is Kristen Page Madonia. And this is her book, Fingerprints of You, which I picked up a little while ago because I knew she was coming. It's a story about a single mom and her daughter. And they move around a lot because they, you know, can't seem to find a place where they belong and they keep trying to move away from their past. And then Lemon, the daughter, gets knocked up. Um, and so instead of continuing to just like live this nomadic lifestyle with her mom, she goes on a road trip to San Francisco uh, to find her dad. And so, you know, whole coming of age novel. Um, I obviously haven't read it yet, but I'm still really excited to meet Kristen Page when she comes, get it signed, and maybe have a giveaway. We'll see. I don't talk about short stories a lot on the YouTube channel, but I do read a lot of them and they're kind of difficult to review. I did review one recently, so if you want to see that it's on my blog. I will link the post below, um, but I have a new collection of short stories, new-ish, that I wanted to talk about. I'm gonna read this. Hold on. Let me read this out loud so I don't mess up her name. Night at the Fiestas by Kirsten Valdez Quade, or Quaid, um, and she was voted one of a National Book Foundation's five under 35, so I know that it's going to be great writing. Um, there's themes of class and race and coming of age, and some of the story's descriptions were really funny, like a girl finding out that her father has been squatting in her grandmother's empty apartment, but there's also, you know, a boa constrictor in there with him. Weird. So, uh, sounded like something I would really enjoy, and I picked it up, and it's been sitting on my shelf, so I need to read it. So, my next pick is actually, uh, I chose it out of my own damn books for the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, so this is my murder mystery pick, because I hate those, and surprisingly, apparently, this is supposed to be kind of one, but anyways, I picked this up forever ago, haven't read it yet, it is Sarah Reese Brennan's Unspoken, uh, book one of the Lyburn Trilogy, 
And uh, so it's about a girl. Her name is Cammy, and she is best friends with a boy uh, whose voice she hears in her head. And then some new neighbors move in next door, and turns out that one of them is the boy she hears in her head. Not so imaginary friend, much real person who also thought Cammy was imaginal. Ima who also thought that Cammy was imagined. No, why can't I say this word? Who also thought that Cammy was imaginary. Um, and then, you know, some dark and dangerous, mysterious, murder mystery-esque things start happening. And they have to, like, learn to trust each other, but also solve the mystery together. Um, I actually got to meet Sarah um, at a event that had her, Holly Black, and Cassandra Clare. And I fell in love with her. But I haven't read this novel yet, and that feels really sad to me, so I was really happy to be able to fit it into the Pop Sugar Challenge and make it a priority for this year. My next three books are all novels, which is where most of my reading comes in. Uh, the first of which I'm a little bit ashamed that I haven't read yet, uh, because I've owned it for like five years now, maybe a little less, but about that. And that's uh, brief, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde by Juno Diaz. Juno Diaz is one of my favorite professors at school's favorite authors. And he actually got to meet Juno Diaz and, like, have drinks with him. And it was a really funny story. And I've had this on my shelves forever and haven't picked it up. And I need to. Um, it's about a nerdy kid in New Jersey who wants to write fantasy stories and, um goes on a journey, and there's a curse involved. Just lots of things that sound really great. My next pick is, again, for my Pop Sugar Challenge. Um, it is a book that I have more recently acquired, but I'm still very excited to read. It's the second book in a series, so I'm not going to tell you too much about like this book's plot in particular, but it is Maid of Deception by Jennifer McGowan. It is the second book in the Maids of Honor series, and the idea behind this series is that there are these girls who have either been taken off the street or recruited from the aristocracy, and they are all the spy ladies for Queen Elizabeth I. So, historical fiction that takes place uh, in Queen Elizabeth's court. And, like, so the first book was all about this one girl who was a pickpocket um, and thief who also worked for an acting agency. And so for her talent, she was brought into the folds um, to be, like, a thief for Her Majesty. And it was a really good book, and I was really excited about it. This book is about a different girl, uh, Beatrice, for those of you who are familiar with the character, but she is actually a lady-in-waiting, so like a real noble who's engaged to some old dude, and her power, her power, it's not like a real power, but her specialty is seduction, and so she's asked to seduce one of the new Scottish lords that comes to town, and she's like, what? And so, of course, you know, she falls in love with him, blah, 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 but... I'm excited. She was a really sassy character in the first books, and I'm excited to read a book from her perspective. My next book hasn't been out that long. It's actually quite new, but uh, I heard about it forever ago and picked it up and really wanted to read it, um, and that is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mendel. A lot of people on BookTube read this and were talking about it. I was also a National Book Award finalist, so again, probably really beautiful writing. I can't go wrong here. Um, actually, I picked this for our book club to read next month um, for our hashtag in Bibliomancy special episode. So we're going to be talking about this uh, drunk. It's a post-apocalyptic novel uh, following a group of actors who traveled the country after a plague has wiped out a bunch of people performing Shakespeare. So literary, short, dystopian, well not dystopian, post-apocalyptic, different things, but yes. Sounds good. My final pick is um, an interesting one for me. I picked it up because um, I was looking for more books like Sarah J. Mass's books, and literally Goodreads wouldn't stop showing me this book, and because I am susceptible, and also some other people said that it was good, I picked up The Winner's Curse by Marie Witkowski. I'm not sure I'm saying her last name right, but I'm sorry. Um, and so this is a book about the daughter of a general who um, ends up um, somehow acquiring the life of this slave boy. So your typical story of two different people from two different worlds who fall in love and because of their, you know, social boundary crossing love have to save the world. I, 
yes, I sound very skeptical about the plot, but it's been recommended to me by so many people as something that I would like that, you know, I, I'll try it. I'll try anything once. The cover's really pretty. So, and again, I've heard good things. So, I'm skeptical, but I'm optimistic. Let me know if you've read it. Tell me. Tell me what I've gotten myself into. I have it. It's here. I'm going to read it. Help! All right, my next book is a bit of a chunky one, and actually one of our subscribers, for the love of Ryan, um, Ryan has reviewed this on his channel recently, and I watched it, and therefore it sort of moved its way up my TBR um, because I already had it and hadn't read it yet, and that would be The Corrections by Jonathan Franzen. I think he's actually reviewed all of Franzen's novels on his channel, and he could tell you way better things about him because all of his videos are non-spoilery, so you should definitely go ahead over there. I'll link the review to this one down below that he did because it was great and made me want to read it automatically, um, and I already owned it, so I might as well. Um, this is a story of a family in the United States and sort of their fall or rise or mostly fall and it's apparently discussing the problems with um, American values in our time period and things like that. Things that I would enjoy and definitely enjoy breaking down literary fiction. It's just really big which is a little bit intimidating when you're me. <laughs> so I will try and get to this one soon although it might not be Soon, soon, soon. It might just be soon. So that is our top five uh, TBR for our Read Your Own Damn Books Challenge. Um, of course, there are plenty more where that came from that you'll see throughout the year, but if we play our cards right, you'll see these sooner-ish. We make no promises. If you have read any of these books and you think that we should move them up or down on our list, please let us know down in the comments. Or if maybe one of these books is also on your to-be-read list, let us know. We are so excited to be able to chat with people while we read books. Books are cool, guys. You might not know this, but you're here. So... Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye!